What's going on, Melon Farmers? DMAC back with another episode of the Hamilton Huskies franchise mode for NHL 21. If you haven't already, scroll down, hit that like button, and subscribe with the bell icon for new videos coming all the freaking time. And in this one, we are doing the year six offseason. After a devastating first round in the playoffs where we were taken out in five games by the Toronto Maple Leafs after suffering so many freaking injuries to end the year. We had like no goaltending. Oh man, it was bad. Anyway, so in this one, we've got a whole freaking lot of stuff we're going to have to do, right? We are going to go to the draft interviews, then we're going to do the draft, then we're going to go through the re-sign phase. We have to get an entirely new coaching lineup. And after all is said and freaking done, <laughs> we've got to uh, completely rebuild our bottom two defense and our bottom six forwards in the National Hockey League. And after all that is done, I mean, oh my goodness, they're just, just one thing after another. I would love to get uh, a, a better backup goaltender, one who has got... Maybe like a veteran backup goaltender, someone who's got the poise where they are going to be able to um, give Gustafson that confidence he's going to need in the playoffs. Now, if he has a couple bad games, we could always swap out, go to that uh, veteran presence or something, you know. Anyway, so I am going to say simulate to draft. We are going to move ahead to the draft interviews and let's just get this friggin' off season going, boys. Simulate to draft. All right, let's view retired players. First and foremost, uh, we got Filthy Phil Kessel, Zach Parisi, Johnny Taser. Oh, man. Brad Marchand, Paul Stasny, David Krejci, Duncan Keith. Holy crap. TJ Sochi, Jordan friggin' Stahl, Jiver. We got Tanger, the real deal, James Neal. Holy. Tyler Bozak. Kevin Shattenkirk, Eric Johnson, Cal Clutterbuck, Cody Eakin. Man, there's a lot of freaking people <laughs> retiring. Who do we got in that? Mark andre Fleury. Holy Jesus, man. Uh, Semyon Varlamov, Corey Crawford, Mikey Smith finally decided to call her quits, man. Yaro Halak, Jim Reimer, Johnny Bernier, Anton Hudobin, Mike Condon. I didn't even realize he was still, like, kicking around, man. Mike Condon in real life is only, like, 30? Wow, that's wild. Uh, Troy Groznik or Groznik. And that's it. Okay, all right, man. That's not bad. All right. We had some pretty big freaking name fellas in there, though. That's kind of wild, eh? All right, what do we got? Zach Parise is officially a coach. So is Paul Stasny. All right, let's see. I know that... Okay, wait. The following coaches have retired. I see the Belleville Senators in there. Uh, is the Hamilton Huskies? No. So Lucas Ranko. I don't know who he was to us. I can't remember who he was to us. Uh, so we go to the draft interviews. Here we go. Moving forward. First things last. Uh, Theodore Klein. We're not going to get the first overall pick. I think we're probably, what, pick 23, 24? Something like that. So we got this. Le oh, they're saying, what, we're like pick 26? But I had this Levo guy, Tony Levo. I liked him. 6'4". 204 pounds in an A plus league, but he is on the third pairing. Uh, so you know what? We're gonna we're gonna take a peek around Levo, maybe a few ahead. We got like uh, Xander Sumal playing for the Mississauga Steelheads. He's a 5'11, 188 pound right winger. He had 41 points in 64 games. He was a plus 15 um, based on stats. Like I am gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to mark him, but I don't know that we're going to go for him. Ladislav Orch Orshog, something like that. <laughs> right defender, six foot three, 194 pounds. Five assists in 39 games, playing in Extra Liga. Uh, he was a plus nine, playing on their third pairing. I don't know about that. Mikhail Vishnevsky, he was a minus, though. No, no, no. I, don't, I think he's probably a... He's likely a two-way forward or a power forward center. I do love... Center power forwards, but I just don't know. We got Nelson Aronson. He was one of the first guys that I looked at. Another left winger. What about like Esteban Sauer? Six foot four, 197. Oh my God. <laughs> 76 points in 66 games. Top line player. 60 penalty minutes. I can promise you. Freaking Esteban Sauer. I'm going to get rid of him. 
I can almost promise you he's got like top six potential. He's probably like a 65 overall friggin' left wing power forward or something. Maybe as I just, the only thing I could see him really being is a power forward. I don't really see him being like a two way forward, but I could see him being like a power forward. Uh, who else we got? Lassie Lettinen. Nah, it's nothing. Uh, Gary Shaw, 23 points in 60 games. He was a plus 12. He is a left defender. So I'm thinking he's probably a two-way defender. 6'1", 200 pounds. I mean, it looks good. You know, I do like I do like his stats. It is possible we could move on from someone and get... Uh, where the hell is he? It's Esteban Sauer, right? Yeah, I like him, man. Um, Tony Levo. I don't, I don't exactly want to get rid of him. Uh, so this Esteban Sauer, yeah, I'm going to go interview this guy and we're going to take a peek at him. All right. So, uh, let's talk, let's talk about your style of play. What do we got, baby? Works for me. I too would like to chat about <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, play style. Give me a quick breakdown. How do you play on the ice, baby? As a forward, I feel, so he's a two way forward. All right. All right. That's fine. That's fine. I love two way forwards, man. Especially big ones that can put up points. There's nothing wrong with that. How ready are you, man? I imagine he's not too, too ready. Still some work. Uh, still some work to do on my game. I'm a couple years away. He's two years out. Oh, my God. So he's probably like 67, 68 years old. Or <laughs> years old. Overall. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. What else do we got, man? Uh, skills. Give me some skills, baby. What are your strengths? Really, you... you you guys at EA, man, you you upped the... It's got to be my skating. Okay, so he's a two-way guy. He's two years away. And and his skating is absolutely absurd. I I'm really starting to like this guy, Esteban Sauer. I'm really liking this guy. I don't think I want to trade up for him, though. Um, I think I would like to make a trade. He could be low elite. Oh, my God. This guy just got so much better. <laughs> He honestly, you know what, um, I'm going to interview Levo. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I'd want to get just a second first round pick, but I don't think it would cost me too, too much to uh, to pick up like the number 21 or number 22 pick. And I think there's going to be someone in and around that area that is going to be willing to get rid of that pick. So I'm not overly worried about that. Okay, thank you so much for inviting me to the interview uh, before the draft. I'm excited by the thought of joining your organization. Uh, right, again, this is the same thing I do for uh, every single person that I'm interviewing or whatever at the draft interviews. I ask the same three questions. Uh, to a defender, I figured he was going to be. Let's see, what is your readiness, man? Uh, to be honest, I feel I need at least a few more seasons. So he's three years out. That's kind of the standard. He's about six, anywhere between, what is it, 62 and 65 or 66 overall, something like that. So let's see what his strengths and weaknesses are. I'm going to go for strengths as always. This is how I like to figure out um, what players look like. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of guys on this team that are going to be kind of taking a hike, you know. And we are going to need to completely revamp our entire coaching. So him, it says HL Top 2D. I think Esteban Sauer is going to be our guy, man. If he is legitimately low elite and he's like pushing 70 overall, man. That could, if he's like 68 overall, it's like he is legit like two years out. And he could end up being a massive part of this team's future, man. I'm going to have to try and, like, keep track of this guy, you know? And then we had Xiao, uh, another defender. I think he's probably a two-way defender as well. I uh, I could definitely get him at 29. Might even be able to, like, trade down and then grab maybe, like, a bottom defenseman, maybe a, a prospect or something. I don't know, man. Things are going to start looking up here. Here we go. Again, play style. Freaking Gary Xiao. Uh, let's talk. Oh, I did it. In the, I did it in the wrong order. Freaking throws everything off. Freaking <laughs> Still at least a few years. He's four years out. Okay. Okay. So this guy, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be going for this guy. I feel like, uh, I'm a stay at home. He's a defensive defenseman. They are hard to freaking grow, man. Defensive defensemen, if they're not like elite, <laughs> they're, they're kind of tough to grow, man. <laughs> Because they don't produce a lot of points, so they don't get a lot of growth. And it can be very, very frustrating. Yeah, he's a very fast-skating defensive defenseman. So he reminds me of somebody that I had in an old franchise mode. Anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I'm assuming he's going to be like 
top six defenseman or something, maybe like low top four. Uh, it says could be medium elite. I imagine he's like medium top six though. If I he's like Chris Chelios, holy ju- jumping German Jesus. What does that mean? He's gonna be elite until he's forty six. Holy crap, a moly, man! All right, so we did our. Uh, I'm gonna go to the draft board. We did our interviews. We saw what we had to see. Um, projected picks number twenty five. Okay, that's not awful. I don't want to trade up though. So if I go and look at these guys again, what was he? He was the number 22 pick. So I would want to go for pick 20 or 21, uh, not pick 22. Because you like after you're done like the top 10, right, the order can get kind of thrown around a little bit. But uh, Esteban Sauer, he's definitely the number one guy I want to go for. So I, wi- I would be willing to make a trade to get him. But here's the thing. Freaking, uh, I don't know if I'd want to get rid of him though. I was going to say Dominic Cahoon. He's, uh, let's see, Dominic Cahoon, he's probably got a ton of value again, right? So Riley, Larkin, McFarlane, we got Vertanen still. He's got after, this is for last year. Oh, God, he's entering the last year of his contract. We got three players at $9 million or above. We got $18 million cap space. I mean, Janssen, Vertanen, Hepo, that's an, that's an unreal second line. That, that second line is a normal team's, like, friggin' half of their first line, man. But then Dominic Cahoon jumped up. So, oh, he's got no contract. That's why he's got no damn value. Lucas freaking Raymond, he's going to be jumping into his first big contract this season. I mean, he had 55 points. He's been, what, two years here now? Yeah, two years. He got 51, and then he got 55. His goal scoring went down a little bit, but that's because... Uh, Ryan McFarland's goal scoring is absolutely out of control. It's super good. Now, would I want... Wait, hold on here, this Gautier fella. He's going to be expiring. He's a good power forward guy that we could use on our bottom six very nicely. Carson Soucy doesn't want to come back. So he's one of those guys we can we can move on from. Remy Ely, uh, he's 30 years old. He got 31 points on that third line for me, though. I mean, I wouldn't mind holding on to him, dude. If we could get, well, Dominic Cahoon, I don't know that he's, yeah, he's not really a third liner anymore, but I guess Cahoon, Ely, and uh, Gautier could work. What did Gautier want again? I can't remember. He played like 20 games with us, and he had nine points. Yeah, seven goals, two assists, nine points, but he was a minus. What did he want again? He wants essentially what he's making now, but for two more years. So if I... Dropped it down. I would be willing to give him 1.6. I would be willing to give him 1.6. Because he is in the 80s overall. It's not like he's bad, you know. Giovanni Smith, I'm actually going to move... uh, I'm going to move away from this fourth line, right? So, and then I do very quickly want to look. In the system, uh, Landon McCallum, there is a chance... I mean, he played in our, our, our minor league team. There's a chance he could be somewhat NHL ready this year. Even if it was like some kind of backup role. It'd be amazing if Andre Galiev was ready. If 47 points in the minors on the first friggin' pairing, it's like, you know, it'd be amazing if he was suddenly NHL ready and we could find a good defensive defenseman to go on that third pairing with him. I'd almost just want to do that anyway, you know? Oh, so then we got Furlan. Who else do we got? Is that again? Reginald Sanford, second round pick three years ago. Good two-way defender. He needs to grow. He really does. But he's got low top four. Could be promising. You never know. Here's some of the guys we have not signed yet. And then there was Coivisto. Ville Coivisto. Undrafted. Who the hell are you? <laughs> and in net, we've got Berkvist, Tamara, Hudobin. And I like this McGratton kid. David McGratton, man. I like him. Third round pick. I would say could even be goalie of the future. Could be wild, man. I mean, we got Gustafson. Gustafson is an elite goaltender, and look at his poise. He's unreal. He's like, ab- whoops, absolutely unreal. I can't wait. Anyway, we're just wasting time at this point, so we do have to move forward. We got a lot of talking done. Uh, here we go. Entering the NHL entry draft, man. Here we go. So we're not going to get pick number one, but we did want to make a trade. Who wants to trade their pick here in the first? No one around this point wants to trade that pick. I don't want to make a trade for like the, you know, pick number. Uh. <laughs> I didn't want to make a trade for like pick 16, you know? My God. 
but they're the only ones that want to trade their picks, you know? So draft pick, I'll give you this and a third. We'll see if that'll go through. That might work. They'll trade down and take a third round pick. Trade rejected. I'd have to throw in some sort of sweetener. Let's see if they want Mikey Anderson or Carson Soucy. Um, They want Carson Soucy. Everyone seems to really want Carson Soucy. <laughs> and rejected. I'd have to throw a sweetener in on top, eh? Oh my goodness, man. I don't want to get like fleeced here. Come on. Let's go for a seventh on top. Trade rejected. No. So we'll go with a sixth. I don't want to lose this kid. That's the thing, right? Oh my God. <laughs> a first, a third, and a fifth. You freaking greedy bastards. Get out of here. We can live with what you're asking us to send your way. We're glad that you paid attention to our trade block surplus. Uh, the best I can do is give you this fourth. Rejected. Like, what do I have to freaking do? Do I have to give you every freaking draft pick I got here? Like, what are we doing? I'll give you a fourth next year. Jesus Christ. Trade accepted. <laughs> yeah, I got fleeced in that deal. <laughs> so I'm going to move. Uh, actually, I'm going to go view draft class and see if there's anybody that is like significantly better that I could take before then. With the 16th pick, I could get like uh, Nico Allen and nah, thank you. Uh, Sergey Volchenkov, no thank you. Maximilian Kopitz, Timofey Yaskin. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Julius Dingman. Okay, get out of my life. Why did you guys? You know what? Honestly, sim to pick 16. I know the guy that I want, and I'm gonna freaking take Volchenkov. I said no thanks to this guy. He's got medium elite potential. And he's a 15th overall pick. Good for you, Winnipeg. Holy crap, a moly, man. Uh, so yeah, my boy Sauer here, Esteban Sauer. Was it worth it? Boom! Low elite 70 overall, baby. Oh yeah! The 16th overall pick was most certainly a good one, man. <laughs> oh, and his poise is like not that bad for his overall. Where did he come from? Esteban Sauer from USA. So if you sign him, he's like, he's in the AHL today if you sign him, you know? But I think I'd like to give him like one year kind of thing. So now I got a sim to pick 153. We got ourselves a wicked left wing prospect though. Now let's see if we can't find some kind of steal here late in the draft. Uh, Ulf Ahanen, you know what? Let's do it this way. Oh, Arthur Brathwaite, plus 30 for the London Knights. He had 48 points, plus 30, 44 penalty minutes, played 16 minutes a night. Uh, he's like on the second line and he produces crazy ass points for the London freaking Knights of the OHL, man. You know what? Brathwaite, I'm kind of leaning towards him, dude. He could be one of those guys, left winger. He's little, so he's probably a playmaker or a sniper. Probably a playmaker, right? Oh, he's a sniper. Okay, top nine forward potential, 59 overall sniper. Uh, fifth round pick. I got no I got no beef with that, man. All right, so we'll sim to pick uh, 185 here. Let's see, yet again, if we can, whoa, low top six, right off the hop. Eh? He's plus 13. He only got one goal in 35 games. But, I mean, yeah, he's like five years out. Could be, you know what, we got to go because he could be a top six guy. Yeah, power forward, low top nine, yet again. About the same as our fifth round pick. You know what, I don't mind him, though. There's nothing wrong with that. He could grow unexpectedly well, you know. So let's go for a seventh round pick now. or Yeah, seventh round, 25th pick. This draft, I would aud I honestly would say this draft was a, su yeah, a success, just from the number 16 guy we got. So this guy, 911, 286, four shutouts playing in the W. He played 69 games, man. I know the WHL doesn't really have a lot of strength of competition, but this overager goalie who is 6'3, he is uh six foot three, 196 pounds. He is 20, but that's fine. I'm gonna go with a damn goalie. What did we get? High fringe starter. You know what? For a seventh round friggin' pick. I will take that. He has the potential to change to a starter goaltender. You give him one more friggin' year in the minors. Absolutely fantabulous. And you know what I like most about him? Other than his speed being at 80, his puck playing frequency is very low. I love that. Seventh round pick. I think we might have just got two steals out of the same draft. Oh, man. I think we might have just got two really good players 
one in the mid to late first round and one in the late seventh. That's unreal, man. That's crazy. <laughs> all right, you know what? I'm actually pretty all right with the draft. I know we only really had like three or four picks at the draft, but I don't think we really got any misses. Yeah, we only had four picks. One of them was in the top 150. But you know what, honestly, Esteban Sauer, I got big plans for that kid, and I think he is going to be fan-freaking-tastic. Brathwaite and Gunnarsson, I think they have a decent enough chance of someday making the NHL. And this Hillen kid, high fringe starter, seventh-round goaltender, he could have a breakout year and honestly could jump to starter potential and he could just end up being the steal of the draft. I think that was a fantastic seventh round draft pick. Underrated. I think it was an under freaking rated seventh round pick. Now, as I said before, all of our coaches are expiring. That is fine. And Gautier decided to come back. I want to get rid of the coaches. I do want to start from friggin' scratch here. So I'm not overly upset about that. All right. So looking at our contracts, first thing I want to do is go to all expiring. Um, so Giovanni Smith, we can release as much as it pains me. Uh, this Olsen cat, he had three points in nine games. He is a depth center, two-way center. Um... He doesn't want an extension or anything. So you know what I think? We're going to release him. Uh, Alexander Fortin. He does not want to stick around. So anyone who doesn't want to be here, I'm just going to get rid of. You know? Um, Linjala, I'm going to qualify. Um, Peyton Trainer, He is 22. I got him in the third round five years ago. So he's about to turn 23. But I wouldn't mind him. I'm going to qualify him because I wouldn't mind him in the uh, AHL. Uh, LaBerge, I think that's Laberge, I think maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, Grigoire, we're going to offer him a contract, two-way, we'll give him 875. We do need to stock up those uh, <laughs> bottom fellas. I'm going to get a couple, like Jacob Magna, uh, Liam Howell. You know what, man, you were so damn not effective for me, but I think I am honestly going to, I want you for two years. And yeah, you can be a UFA. That doesn't hurt my feelings. But I do want him, but I want him for the minors. Walford. What do we got? Scotty Walford. Two-way defender. Um, I would... I'll say qualify. Remy Ely, what did he want? He wants one and... Essentially one and three quarters for two years. Um, I'd give you 1.6. That's about the best I'm going to do, baby. That's about the best I'm going to do. So Dominic Cahoon, what would he want? He was that, like, reject nobody cared about. I mean, you know, he's he's he hasn't had much of a career since he left Ottawa <laughs> and came to Hamilton. I mean, he hasn't had a bad career, but certainly hasn't had a great one with us. He has been relatively nowhere to be found. He played only seven games last year. And 56 games, or 82 games this year, where he actually had a really good season. But if he doesn't want to come back, I mean, what would he want anyway? You Okay, calm down now. He wants, like, like what if what if I offered you, like, a one-year deal? Oh, even then. Even if you were to get him for one year, he's going to want. You're going to have to pay him six and a half just to keep him. And, yeah, I simply do not have, we don't have the money to do that, you know? Um, Jake Vertanen is going to be damn near eligible for an extension. We're likely going to have to let him go. Uh, Ghost and Hamilton after this coming year are going to have to go. Um, it is, I don't know, man. This, this team's getting expensive. We are getting into a situation where even this year, it could get a little, you know, it, it could get tight. You know, Galiev could end up being ready to go this year. And that is a damn cheap contract this year. And that would be amazing if a friggin' sixth round pick <laughs> ended up finally making it onto the team. I mean, like, look at his puck control. Look at his passing, you know? Look at his shooting. His skating's pretty good. His poise is 80. <laughs> He's a good player. He's got good discipline. He's just not very smart defensively. So what you do there is you offset that by getting a defensive-minded, like, assistant or associate coach. Then we got our boy Riley Kidney, who, you know what, is going to make the leap this year. 
I think we're just going to beef everything up. We've got Gustafson. We need to trust our goaltender. Philip Gustafson, man, I believe in him. You know, I believe in Philip Gustafson. I'm uh, I'm thinking we're going to be... Oh, yeah, we got uh, Ruslan Hudobin. Uh, you know what? I am going to release him. We got my boy, David McGratton, who is like, in my opinion, could very well be the future of this team. Uh, Werner, I think we can move on from him. That shouldn't be too much of a shock to anyone. He really was not successful as our backup. I know way too much was put on him this year, you know. But Philip Gustafson, I mean, we got two years left of that fantastic friggin' contract, you know. I think he's pretty much done growing, but 86 overall, there is nothing wrong with that in net. Nothing wrong with that at all. And he's got just fantastic everything else. So when it comes to all skaters, I'm going to, first I'm going to go to unsigned. Um, I don't think we need to sign Esteban Sauer right off the hop. It would put him right into the a, uh, AHL, and it is possible that he would grow relatively well throughout the year. But what I think I'm going to do with him is I'm not going to sign him. I'm going to leave him in the minors in the U.S. for one more year where he's probably, I just hope, he will dominate, you know. And, and if he does dominate and he jumps to like 73, 74 overall, then we toss him in the AHL for one more year and then I think he's going to be what like the leader of the third or fourth line, you know? He's low elite. He could end up being a top six two-way guy for us. And that could be friggin' huge, right? I don't think we really have anyone that's like expiring, you know? Like Mike Hickey, we took him 27th overall. Right slash left wing sniper. He's a big boy. Uh, I still think he's got another year before he's even age already. So I don't think there's really anyone we have to sign here. You know, so if we go to like goaltenders, yeah, no, everybody's fine for another year. Um, I don't really think there's much work that needs to be done here. I know the second half of the offseason this year is definitely going to be the one that takes all the time. Uh, we're going to have to start talking about extensions and things like that. And we're going to have to start thinking about moving on from a couple of people. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, folks? But that Riley Kidney, I want him to come up this year. Uh, Riley Stotts, I was thinking that could be interesting if he came up this year, but I don't know that he'll be ready. Um, Nicholas Delorier was a grinder on our fourth line. We're not going to need him anymore, but I don't exactly, like, I'm not going to spend $300,000 for the next two years just to get a player that doesn't cost anything out of my, out of my lineup, right? Um, but yeah, otherwise, no, I'm, I'm like perfectly fine with, with everything here. I think Landon, Landon McCallum, if he has a really great offseason, he's another one. We could have a interesting looking, like, fourth line. You know what I mean? But Riley Kidney, I'd really love it if he came up this year. But uh, that's pretty much all that we have to do. The first thing we're going to do after we're past the re-sign phase this year, uh, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to get coaches. And then we're going to have to make trades. We're going to have to pick up free agents. And we have to rebuild our, like, entire bottom six. And we definitely need a bottom two defensive pairing. But that's, there's no big-name guys we need. Okay, so Remy Ely's out. Magna's in. Grigawar's in. Liam Howell's in. So all of those guys are minor leaguers. So I tried to get Dominic Goon to come back. He didn't want to. So, sadly... It's time for him to just move on. It is time for him to just leave. Now we're going into the final day. Scott Walford. All righty. All righty. And one more day. Uh, the following coaches have not been renewed. I don't want to renew coaches. I want new coaches, not renew coaches. <laughs> oh, baby. So it still says buyer. Anyway, so what we're going to do uh, right off the friggin' hop is we are going to, where the hell are we? Where is it? Ah! We are going to go to coaching staff, and we are going to hire staff. Because we have most of our team, uh, we have most of our team set up. So what I'm going to do is hire the new staff, and then I am going to, uh, then I'm going to find free agents once we have the coaching staff. We need the coaches here to fit really well with the players we already have and then find new ones that also go with that. So, 
Let's jump in and hire some coaches. So we're clicking on this. We are going to find ourselves a new friggin' head coach, but I'm just going to throw it out there and say, we do have like millions of friggin' dollars. I do want like a forward coach or something. Someone who's got decent enough teaching. Oh my freaking God. <laughs> That's unreal for that to be your first person. Holy crap. 81%. That's, you know what? I'm going for him. I'm going for him right away. He wants to be uh, an associate coach, but I want him as a head coach, man. I would offer him, I, I would offer him like 1.2 to be our friggin' head coach this year, man. It's like you got, and he wants five years. Okay, he's got a great career record. Keaton Hirama. Okay, so he is definitely going to be like our head coach, right? So we got a forward head coach. Um, then we are going to go for an associate coach. Oh, he was an associate coach. So we got forwards. I'm thinking we're going to go like for defensemen maybe. What do we also... Uh, teaching's not great. His penalty kill is really, really good. 64 is not amazing. Uh, let's go down. Defenseman, good, better teaching. Uh, 49. That's not so great. Uh, Andre Sofiles, good penalty kill. 46, that's no good. Um, what about a generalist? I do want like a defensive guy at some point. McLeod, good. 68, that's better. That's a little bit better. He actually fits relatively well with like everyone. Not amazing, except with like Brett Pesci, uh, Jake Vertanen, Morgan Riley, Ryan McFarlane fits pretty good with McFarlane. Uh, so McLeod, we got to remember McLeod, right? Malhotra, great teaching. 59, it's not so great. Um, what else do we got? I think this was like the last guy, right? 46, 81, and he's an offensive guy. He's an offensive friggin' coach, 81, my goodness. Uh, I don't want to go full offense, though, you know. I don't want to go full forwards, but for the associate coach, so I'll offer him, like, 700. That puts us at 1.9 million. So that leaves us with, what, 1.4 for the goalie coach and the assistant coach, but they don't uh, really need as much. They don't cost quite so much, so we'll go for an NHL assistant coach. Uh, absolutely no choice but to go for, like, a defensive assistant coach if they even have any. Like, are there just none <laughs> kicking around? There we go. Colborn, $460,000. Decent teaching. Decent penalty kill. 70 freaking 2 Holy crap a moly. We got our defensive coach. And there's five. Now, we're going to offer him, like, 550 just to make sure that he actually shows up. And there we freaking go, baby. And now we just need a damn goalie coach, and we are laughing. So scrolling down, there's no goalie coaches. Uh, was there any up here? I can't even remember if there was any freaking goalie coach. I don't even think there was any goalie coaches up here, man. We need a goalie coach. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Pilo. What's going on, Pilo? Peyton Lowe. B teaching, not bad. 66. We can get our goaltender coach right there, man. So let's offer him like five. Let's offer him six hundred. That leaves us with like what, one hundred and eighty thousand dollars or something. Doesn't really leave us with a ton of money. But if everybody decides to sign on and play, I mean, oh man, we could have one of the just best friggin' chemistry coaching staff in the damn NHL, man. So they want McGratton and they want to give me a... No, absolutely not. You're essentially saying you want a starting potential goalie. Oh, wait. Associate coach? Okay. Uh, goalie coach? We got two out of four. Two out of four, baby. What do we got? Um, happy to join the team. Head coach? Holy freaking crap moly And happily accept. We got them all. <laughs> oh, my God. What is their chemistry? 82. That's pretty damn good, man. Two offensive guys, a defensive guy, and a good goalie coach. So that defensive assistant coach, I think, is really going to help us a lot. So now, if I go to view contracts, I want to kind of take a peek and see what we've got and what we're going to have to work with. I hate the fact that Hamilton and Ghost are both like on the verge of, of leaving, but they are both 32 years old, so they are going to start to drop, you know? Uh, like Hepo, one of the best value contracts we have on this team. And we have him for, what, three years? It's either two or three. That's two years. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Vertanen, let me guess, 10 million? Nine and a half for four years. 
But I mean, after this year, I think we can move on from Jake Vertanen, even though I love the guy. Um, we're going to have to move on soon from Morgan Riley. I say we got him this year, maybe next year, maybe the year after, and then his contract could be considered a bad one. But uh, if we go to centers, we've got Ryan McFarlane, number one center. Hepo Niemi, uh, number two center. Who's this? Uh, Hood, Samuel Hood or Hude? Howd? Samuel Howd? Sammy Howd, I guess. Uh, undrafted playmaking center. He's a decent enough set. Look at the freaking speed and agility on that guy, man. Absolutely out of control. He's got just no poise. That's the only beef that I got with him. But honestly, you know what? Sammy Hood, he could be a good bottom center. He, he could be a great like fourth line center. But I think I would rather use like Riley Kidney. If I could, I think I'd rather use Riley Kidney. He wants a one-year extension. I'll give him... Uh, I will give him a $900,000 extension. We got 18.6. So let's say we need a third line center. Big time. 100% third line center is what we need. Uh, left wing, that number one left wing spot. I don't think it'll tell me. Okay, so he fits on the second line. Uh, or was that with our last friggin'? Not 100% sure. So we got um, Austin Wagner actually could still fit on that fourth line. He's got amazing poise, bad discipline. So, is going to have to go. But Wagner could stick around on that fourth line. Uh, after that, we've got... Okay, uh, Lucas Raymond is going to be our number one left winger, as always. We got our number one right winger. Vertanen will be our number two right winger. Uh, Gauthier is the number three right winger. So, we need a fourth line right wing, third line center. Uh, fourth... I don't know. Or wait, no. Riley Kidney was going to be our fourth line center, right? Which means, yeah, no, Wagner's not going to work. Okay, so we do need a fourth line left and right winger. And I think we need an entire third line except for the right winger. We have a third line right winger. We need a third line everything else. Yeah, okay, so. Huh, let me see if I got this right. Third line, we need a left wing and a center. Playmaker sniper or like playmaker two way forward that'd be great I'm trying to keep all this friggin' crap straight here <laughs> oh man so third line left wing center uh fourth line left wing right wing maybe maybe let's go in the system what else do we got uh left wingers yeah no that's okay that's what we need. And then uh, defense, I think Galiev, if he can if he can at least jump to like 77 or 78 overall, honestly, Andre Galiev, I think I am going to call him up and he's going to be one of our third pairing defenders. Doesn't show me how he fits, but yeah, we have Megna, Walford, Mikey Anderson, but Mikey Anderson, I'm not going to use. He is a depth defender. I might use him as a spare, to be 100% honest, but... We've got Pesci and Ghost, and we got Hamilton and Riley. So then I would need, like, one really, really good defensive defenseman. Uh, and then we got Gustafson, and Warner is not going to be our backup. I'm going to get a veteran backup goaltender this year. So we need one, two, three, four, five roster players. That's what we need. Five bottom six roster players. Oh! <sighs> And a number six defenseman. So, we'll go to sign free agents. Yeah, that just friggin' got so confusing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to go down and find people that are maybe a little less expensive here. Uh, still, I'm not paying like $5 million for a friggin' bottom six person. We like Colin Mill. I'm not paying $4 million for a bottom six guy either. Um, Ryan Strome, third line playmaking center slash right winger. Fits line two. We don't need that, but we're now, now, okay, now this is good, right? Um, what about like Mike Hoffman? He's 35 though. That's the only problem, right? Fits top six. What about Rope Hints? Rope Hints, third line center slash left wing, two way forward. Fits line freaking one, man. Uh, Nikita Zaitsev, but he's two way. I don't want him. I don't want a two way guy. Uh, what about Cunning, uh, Luke Cunnan? Two-way forward, bottom six. Fitz, bottom six. He is a two-way center slash right winger. 
Uh, so for the third line, we could use him as a third line center. I like I like uh, Luke Cunning. But we got Chris Tierney too. Chris Tierney is kind of the exact same thing, right? He's 31 years old, two-way guy, fits line three, and the penalty kill. He's even better. There you go. Offer contract, three years, three million. Or I could give him two years. I'd give him two years at 2.6. There we go, Chris Tierney, because after two years, he's probably like no good anymore. Uh, so what did we have? We need like a playmaker on that third line as well. Like what about like Mikhail Granlin, center right winger, but you can put them any way you want, right? He's top six, uh, Athanasiu, playmaker, fits line one. Now we do need like a playmaker to uh, go on that third pairing. Dimitro Timasha, forward line one. It's less than phenomenal. Uh, Eric Howla, he's 34, so a good veteran. Nah, that doesn't work. Jakob Zaborl, what about Yarn Croak? All power play lines. We got a two way. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? So we got two guys that fit on that third line. Come on. What about this grinder fella? Gar <laughs> Garnet Hathaway, there you go, bottom six. <laughs> Um, they don't have to be absolutely absurdly good too, right? Connor Garland, 29 years old. It's line one. It's hard to find bottom six dudes that are like playmaker, you know, playmaker, sniper, stuff like that. What about another like power forward? No, he doesn't fit. Uh, playmaker, Nick Backstrom, 37 years old. <laughs> so on the third line, we got a power forward could have... Wait, what was Cunning? Two-way guy. So it would be like power forward, two-way forward. And I was thinking playmaker would be great. I don't want to get like multiple two-way guys. I would like to throw like a playmaker out there too. Just someone who can kind of set everything up, you know. Or we could do like an Adrian Kempe, good two-way guy. Doesn't fit anywhere. Uh, at the end of the day, you do have to kind of go with what you need, you know. Earl Parks, 23 years old, playmaking right winger, fits line three in the penalty kill. Holy Jesus. I'm going for him, man. Is he an RFA? He sure is. I don't even care. I will offer him. Oh, they're probably going to want to friggin. You know what? I would offer him like two and a quarter because I think I could really grow this guy. Uh, it would cost me a third round pick. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we got those guys. Now, what do we have for the fourth line? We're going to need the same damn thing for, like, the fourth line, right? Uh, we got a playmaker coming in. Fifth line one. It's going to be a little harder to uh, make that fourth line work. What about, like, Brendan Perlini? Fits top six. We could use Jimmy VC or something. That's line two. Let's see. Hold on. Josh Levo. Uwe fits line two, Matt Nieto, line three, Blake Coleman, line one, Gino Dadanov, top six, uh, Wayne Simmons, oh my, fits line three. Uh, so you know what, for the fourth line, we could go for like two-way guys, and then we're going to go here, Booyakasha. Uh, Stenland, two-way guy. We don't know where he fits. Militic fits line four. Two-way guy fits line two. Uh, two-way forward, we don't know. Kirill Maximov fits line three. Uh, you know what? I would pick up Kirill Maximov on a two-way deal just because I really, I really like Kirill Maximov. So I am going to pick him up. And uh, who was the other guy? Was it Militich? He fits line four. I'm going to pick him up as well. We're just going to get him on the team by signing him to nice two-way deals. Uh, what about this guy? Sasha Schmolevsky. Are you serious? He still doesn't, like, really fit anywhere, though, right? Oh, my. What about another playmaker? We don't know where he fits. Power forward. Brett Ritchie's 32. We don't know where he fits. Jesus. Um, what about Kunakel? I'll take a flyer on Kunakel here. You know what? We'll sign him. If he ends up in the minors, you know what? He ends up in the minors. There are a couple of dudes I'm going to sign for the minors anyway. I do like to keep the minors relatively stocked up, full of dudes. 
So we'll go for some of these guys here. We're going to get uh, Matt Luff. I actually really, really like Matt Luff. So I am going to sign Matt Luff. I've always liked Matt Luff. Two-year, two-way deal. Power forward. We're going to get a playmaker. So we got a power forward, a playmaking center. And now we need a two-way sniper like Rudolph's Balsers. There you go. That can be our top line in the minors. That top line is going to chew the miners up and spit them the hell out, man. So I think uh, we have got... That is two-way guys, right? So we'll go all for goaltenders. We need a backup goalie. I am willing to pay a freaking veteran like a Darcy Kemper, but he's a starting goalie. And he really doesn't have poise. I want... Some kind of a backup goalie with good poise. Someone who's been there, you know. Man, like none of these goalies have any poise. We got like a Malcolm Subban. He has 82 poise. That's not terrible. Um, what does he want? He wants two and a quarter, though. Um, Connor Ingram. He has no poise. We had a uh, Connor Ingram, right? Uh, Aaron Dell. No, he's got no poise. Uh, Capo Kakinen. That's who that is, right? He's got no poise. Laurent Brossois, 80 poise. Man, what do we got? Jake Allen, 80 poise. How is his poise not higher than that? What do we got? Alex Nedeljkovic, no. Uh, Grice, Daniil Tarasov. No, that's not Daniil Tarasov. It is Daniil Tarasov. Huh, Samuel, <laughs> Samuel Montembo, no. Uh, Colin Delia, 76. Joseph Wall. No, man. We need a goalie with good poise. Martin Jones, 80. So we might have to pay a little bit. We might have to pay for like a Malcolm Subban, you know? He's got the poise. He would be a really good backup goaltender. And uh, I think I would offer him what he wants. I just need to get a, a little more of a... I just need to get a little more of like a high-powered... Um, goaltender in the net you know and now we can go and look at purchasing ourselves a uh, defenseman here I don't want to get someone who's like 80 overall though I would like to get a guy that's up like you know like this like 81 overall like a Logan Stanley that would be unreal Logan Stanley look at his shot blocking and his stick checking I mean he's got terrible friggin aware or, yeah he's got bad awareness He's got bad puck controls, poise is good, physically he's a monster, and he fits on all pairings. So like Logan Stanley, um, I suppose I would pay him, mm, I'd get you for two years, but not for three, man. <laughs> he's only 27, now that could work out. If we could get all these guys, I think I just offered like 10 contracts. So we are going to skip ahead a couple of minutes, see if this is going to work. And then we're going to take another look at our team, see what we would need. You know what I mean? Uh, they want McGratton and Brathwaite, and they want, to be, they want to give me a fourth and a seventh. Eh? Yeah, you guys are hilarious. Get out of my life. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Malcolm Subban, we have a backup. Boom. Chris Tierney, we have a third liner. Rudolph Balsers, Kirill Maximov, Logan Stanley, <laughs> Matt Luff, Lucas Yasik. Uh, Sam Militic, Tom Kunakel, Riley Kidney decided to renew his contract with us. Um, okay, yeah, Earl Parks decided to sign the contract, but his team could match that offer. But I offered him, what was it, 600000 more than his like market value? I don't know if they would do that. They very well could, though. Was that everyone? No, I'm not giving you McGratton, even though Hinnestroza was the guy on the market here. Uh, they matched it. Son of a, you are, you are no longer obliged to transfer. Okay, Earl Parks. Earl Parks was a two-way guy. Okay, hold on. So I got to go view contracts. I think we should be okay with the team we have. Uh, so if I go back to centers, we got Ryan McFarland, number one. Hepo Niemi, number two. Chris Tierney, number three. And I'm thinking Riley Kidney is going to be number four. All right, so then... Um, Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go to forwards instead. Let me go to main roster. Dylan Larkin, number one right winger. Uh, Jake Vertanen, number two right winger. Janssen, number two left winger. Heppo, number two center. Lucas Raymond, number one left winger. 
Tierney number three center, Gautier number three right wing. It could be like Kirill Maximov or something, but I don't want a power forward. I think he's a sniper, is he not? Yeah, he's a sniper, so I don't know how well that's going to work. Or we could use... Oh, we could use Sam Militich. Never mind. And then we could have Maximov on the fourth line. Or something. I don't think Wagner's going to fit, but I don't know. Anyway, we've got... Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, we've got on defense, we've got Morgan Riley, uh, Dougie Hamilton. Then we'll have Ghost and Pesci. Then we'll have Logan Stanley and hopefully Andre freaking Galiev on that third pairing. And hopefully this team is absolutely unbelievable because we are going to have Malcolm Subain and Philip freaking Gustafson, dude. Gus with 86 poise and a backup that is actually 81 overall. And has 82 poise. So a backup goalie who can hold his own if he's got to. That's 100% what we need on this team. So you know what? Honestly, I think we might have pretty much all that we need. So now looking forward though. View contracts. What do we have left? We got $13 million in cap space. So I suppose we could honestly... Instead of tossing Militich up there on that third line or whatever, I think I would still like to look for a more expensive, uh, a better third liner. And we can just build the team uh, from there on top of that, right? And I think another thing I'm going to do, to be 100% honest, first off, yeah, I need a third line like playmaker. Like what about an Evan Rodriguez, right? Very solid playmaker. Fits on the penalty kill and the power play. But I don't know. Connor Sheary, another playmaker, line one, penalty kill power play. Dominic Cahoon, does he fit everywhere? He fits line three. God damn you, Dominic Cahoon. <laughs> he wants 5.3 though. I would rather pay him for one year and I would pay him like 5.1 for one year uh, to get him back on that number three. And then I think we'll go back to defenseman and we're going to pick up an offensive defenseman just just to be safe, you know. Like, what about, like, a Justin Schultz? He doesn't fit anyway. He's too expensive anyway. Jesus Christ. Um, so we would need an offensive defenseman, though. So let's look for him. All right. Christian Juice could be a nice uh, nice guy for us. No, that doesn't really work. Come on. We need an offensive D-man that just kind of fits, you know. Good offensive defenseman here. Fits top four. I think we're going to run into the same problem we had last year. They don't like offensive defenseman on that third pairing man we might have to go with a two-way guy uh tier no oh, these guys are all friggin never mind i wasn't paying attention i was paying attention to player type and not to the players themselves you know so where are we now schultz so anything above this it would be like adam fox penalty kill that's where he fits everybody else is too expensive anyway um so what if i looked for what if i looked for a two-way guy and we just saw, what's going on here? Yeah. So what if we just looked for a two-way guy that doesn't cost too much? We'll see if he fits and see if he doesn't. Like a, what about like a Victor Mete? He's a top six guy. Fits top four. All right. So, <clears throat> Cal Foot, two-way guy. Fits pairing three. There you go. Just to be safe. Uh, we're going to pick him up for like 2.3, I guess, just to make sure we get him. We'll skip ahead a couple of days, and then I think we're just about set. In, well, how are we doing? Just about set in that department. We have our coaching staff. Everybody's going to fit really, really nice on this freaking team. And then we can think about skipping ahead, getting closer to the actual regular season. Cal Foot's in. He's going to be our backup guy if Andre Galiev doesn't work. After that, we got Peyton Trainer. He did decide to sign. I think he was one of our, uh, Peyton Trainer was one of our RFAs, right? I'm going to decline that even though I like Troy Stetcher. Uh, Dominic Cahoon decided to come back, baby, and they wanted to trade for Lana Lang. And I think uh, if I was to go to sign free agents, there is now zero contracts offered. Beautiful. We have got $7.7 .7 million in cap space. Now let's take one more quick peek at contracts. Is there anyone I would like to sign, extend? Dougie Hamilton has been solid for us. He hasn't really missed a lot of games, but he certainly hasn't been like a top guy either. 
where you look at Shane Goss despair playing top four, playing top four minutes, and he does have 54 points, including 17 friggin' goals. But what does he want? He wants 7.8, and I just simply cannot, I cannot do that. You know, it's it's not gonna happen. Doogie Hamilton, we might be able to almost drop like a million off of whatever he wants. 7.4. We could probably get that down to like 6.4 for four years is too long. We don't want to have both our top guys, you know, signed until they're a thousand years old. That's in the main roster. It's like there's no one else that really needs an extension or anything except say maybe Jake Vertanen. He wants four years. The, the... Is there a sweet spot? It's four years, right? Four years is the sweet spot. That's where he's most comfortable. I could probably knock 1.2 off of that for, you know, 1.2, 1.3. I think it, it, that's about as much as you're going to knock off his contract. And I don't want to, you know, I might be able to get his contract, you know, down to like 8.35. And it's not that he's not worth it, you know. But how long is he going to be worth it? And then you've got like Philip Gustafson next year. He's going to need an extension. I do want to hold on to him. I want him to spend his entire career with the Huskies, even though the rest of his career could very well only be five or six more years as a starter. And he's definitely going to start to regress, right? But uh, I don't know, man. I like this team right now. I think this team has got a huge, crazy shot at being absolutely a Stanley Cup team every single year. I am going to go view contracts one more time. I do need to go to... Where are we? Uh, RFA. We just have Linjala. Bottom six guy. We could just re-sign him. We'll make him a UFA. I'm fine with him then becoming a UFA after. But I really do want... What was it? Kidney? I think it was Kidney, right? That I really want him to come up and become a uh for at least a fourth line center or something like that if i could make him into a fourth line center we could maybe think about getting him on some special teams time to up his minutes up his production all right linjala we got him back they want to give me gusev and vatanen sammy vatanen he is an offensive defenseman but he is way too expensive and they want to take my damn prospects in order to get him mccallum and gratton those are two guys i absolutely do not want to get rid of so what we're going to do really quick right now is go to the Hamilton Huskies franchise record book. So for franchise, we will then go down to the Hamilton Huskies where the point leader all time is Ryan McFarlane with 351 career points. Brett Pesci, five seasons. He is the longest standing guy here. 410 games played. In those five years, I don't know that he's really... He hasn't missed many games if he's missed any. Oh, he, I think he had... You know, he did miss a couple of games. But he didn't miss a lot. Anyway, Ryan McFarlane with 282 penalty minutes. 12 is the franchise record for shutouts. And it's Philip Gustafson's. He has 115 wins. And goals, Ryan McFarland leads with 213. Then, uh, what is this? No, that's in the entire NHL. Oh, there, this is where we want to go. Okay. Season, games played, Brett Pesci, all time, Calvin DeHaan. <laughs> Shutouts, six for Philip Gustafson is the current record and the all time record. 71 penalty minutes for Ryan McFarland. Goals, 62 in a single season for Ryan McFarland. Points, 94. For Ryan McFarland, and they were both last year assists. Morgan Riley last year with 63 and wins. Philip Gustafson with 42 wins. Absolutely unbelievable. I love it. So there is our franchise record book. We are now going to simulate ahead all the way to September 13th, man, where I think Jake Vertanen deserves to get an A on his jersey along with, I would say, like, Dylan Larkin. <laughs> Maybe, like, Morgan Riley and Jake Vertanen or something. I'm not sure. No, we're going to decline that one. Anyway, I'll see you guys in September.
All right, and here we are as we approach the 13th. Let's see, the owner goals should jump up on us too. Yep, view owner goals. Anything short of a Stanley Cup is considered a failure. They want 32 sellouts out of 41. They want us to win our regular uh, regular season home opener. Concessions need an upgrade. I would like us to have at least six home playoff games, which means they want us to get to like game seven of the second round. That's kind of our specialty, to be 100% honest. That's kind of where we like to it's where we like to hang out. So we got Ryan McFarlane. Um, and I'm thinking that's Doogie. We can take it away from Doogie Hamilton, and I'd honestly say give the alternate captaincy to Mr. Jake Vertanen, man. Um, we got a lot, we got a lot going on here. We have got a lot of players that we can build this damn team around, right? So what we're gonna do is take Dylan Larkin, put him up here. Take Lucas Raymond, put him up here. We had Dominic Cahoon, uh, Andreas Janssen, Dominic Cahoon, and Jake Vertanen. He fits beautifully on the second. He fits perfectly on the second. Hepo Niemi fits, I think, slightly better on the second. Chris Tierney's a two-way guy. We could always throw, like, Chris Tierney up there. I don't know. That doesn't really work. Um, what if... Hmm. Hmm. So we could have, like... Well, Dominic Cahoon, I thought they said he fit nicely. That's why I signed him, because it said he fit on line three. So we got Militic as a third liner. He fits everywhere. Uh, Chris Tierney, he can go there. So, again, it would be scratch player. Dominic Cahoon, he's the guy getting scratched, right? Oh, yeah, Gauthier. There we go, baby. We finally... For the first time ever, <laughs> I've got a plus three on this damn third line. This dreaded third line. We have got Austin Wagner, Samuel Howd, uh, insert name here. Who do we got? Kirill Maximov, right wing sniper. He doesn't really fit anywhere. Uh, Dominic Cahoon certainly doesn't really fit anywhere. Mikey Anderson, he kind of fits everywhere, but we don't know. Um, so we are going to have to, I'm going to say, Dominic Cahoon can get sent down. We're going to go to roster moves. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 back to edit lines. Actually, we're going to go starting lineup. Um, Wagner, I don't need, I don't want the grinder line anymore, you know? I think I'm done with the grinder line. So Samuel Howd. I will go scratch player, or will I? You know what, for right now... I'm going to put Kirill Maximov up there because I do I do want him to stick around, you know? What if I was to like, what is it? Would this work? No. <laughs> I was going to say, would you, you imagine put him on the top line, turn Kirill Maximov into like the, the highest value guy in the world. It'd be like 85 overall. <laughs> he costs 900,000. All right, so Samuel Howd, fastest man alive. So Howd can go. Uh, Wagner can go. And Dominic Cahoon can go. Howd, Wagner, Cahoon. Howd, Wagner, Cahoon. Here we go. Now let's send him down. <laughs> All right, where are we, baby? Um, Howd, Wagner. Let's go up a little bit and find Dominic Cahoon. There we go. And then we'll go in the system where Riley Kidney, man. There we go, Riley Kidney. And who else was it? Was there anyone else, really? It's Riley Kidney. Was it like Kunockle? Two-way guy. Maybe it was Kunockle. I actually can't even remember, man. Not McShane. So we'll go with these guys. We'll send down three guys. We'll call up two. Ugh. All right, now let's see what we're doing here. I hope to God Riley Kidney fits on that fourth line. I so hope to God Riley Kidney fits on the fourth line, man. All right, so Riley Kidney, where are you, baby? Oh my god, and he does. All right, all right. Substitute in all lines. Riley Kidney is officially our fourth line center, baby. Oh, the rookie is coming up, dude. And then on this left side, we've got Kunakel, who oh, also fits on the fourth line. Boom, it's a plus one. That doesn't work. That does. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And it's like a. So, what is he? Two way. 
playmaker, sniper. It's just that he doesn't fit. Kirill Maximov does not fit. So we are probably, we're likely going to have to send Maximov down and see if there are any snipers uh, in the minors. Say, go to roster moves. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! All right, so Kirill Maximov is going to have to go down, and he is going to be an absolute stud in the minors. And we are going to go down here, and it's not going to be Wagner. I can pretty much promise you that. But uh, what about this Howd guy? I don't think he fits either, eh? No, not Howd. What's McShane again? He's a playmaker. Luff is a power forward. Uh, Yashik, playmaker. Rudolph's ball sack. He's a sniper. Uh, we could maybe try him. Riley Stotts is a two-way forward. I could try him. But now we're making that fourth line pretty damn weak again. I'm just trying to find something that can work for right now. You know? I'm just trying to find something that works today. Kunakal and Kidney work very, very well on that fourth line. If we can just find... Un Whoops, wrong way to go. If we could just find someone else, like Riley Stotts doesn't fit. So that doesn't work. Okay, left wing, Rudolph's ball sack. Does he fit? Not overly, but let's try it. Still only a plus one. We don't want a playmaker two-way sniper that has like no friggin' no positive at all, right? Two-way playmaker. What is this? This is playmaker, two-way playmaker. Power forward, two-way playmaker. So this is two-way forward. Oh, Nelly. What if I was to bring up Matt freaking Luff, baby? Oh, do we have another power forward? I like that just fine. I think power forwards probably fit on that bottom six just freaking fine, man. Or what if I made a trade? What if I traded, like, Balsers, or if I traded Cahoon, or or something along those lines for a really solid power forward that fits on our fourth line? Like, Gautier, does he fit on... He, see, look, Gautier, boom. Eh, it didn't really get us to plus three, though. So what if... Yeah, 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 yeah. I would need to find some kind of fella that just fit very well down there. All right, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, we're going to go to roster moves. Oh, I, I just, I get it, you know? I get it so much. Um, so who did I just call up again? It was somebody, uh, Rudolph's ball sack, send him down. And what if we were to call up Matt frickin' Luff, people? Matt frickin' Luff. Let's try it out, baby. Balsers for Luff. Let's go back to edit lines yet a frickin' again. See, that's what I mean, right? This is the part that's taken all the damn time. Our third line is not the strongest in the world, but the fact that there's two guys that are like projected third round players, right? And they have a plus three is, is really big, you know? So Matt Luff should fit relatively well. Oh! <laughs> oh, you son of a, oh, we need better than a plus one, man. We need like a power forward that fits on that fourth line, you know? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, yeah, back to edit lines, uh, best lines. That is absolutely terrible. Okay, you know what then? What if I was to try Austin Wagner? We'll see if he fit. Because I don't, you know, go to roster moves. We'll move Luff for Wagner. Just a last ditch effort, man. We'll move Luff. We'll bring up Wagner. Just as a last ditch effort. And then otherwise, we are going to try to move one or two people uh, in a little deal where we can get ourselves a solid fourth line option. Two-way playmaker grinder. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I know he fits really well. Yeah, but because he's a grinder, only it's like grinders go with grinders, you know? Like that just ruins everything. All right, so Kidney, like I said, Riley Kidney is, he's a rookie, but he's, he's very good on this. He's very good for this team. I think he's going to be huge on this team. And I think as soon as next year, he could be our third line center. And eventually someday could end up jumping to top six, being a second line center. You never know, right? I like to grow him from within a little bit too here, man. So I think we are, we are going to look for a power forward for this fourth line. Oh, that's exactly what I think we're going to do. So I'm going to get back to it. All right, here we go. Let's look. I'm going to say done. 
let's friggin' look for a power forward with, that, that fits on this damn fourth line. Ugh. Power forward search. I know they're going to show you the highest value power bleh, power forwards there is, but we want someone who doesn't have a ton of value. You know, ooh, Lupel? Who's this Lupel cat? 80 overall Corbin Lupel. Fits line four and the penalty kill. Yeah, I want this kid. Sorry, Corbin Lupel, you're the guy I want. <laughs> Oh, they do not want to get rid of him. And he is like a friggin' prospect, man. <laughs> but, oh my god, Dominic Cahoon's got all the value in the world. I could move Dominic Cahoon for Lupul, and I could probably get a goddamn draft pick or something out of it, too. Oh, man, what else do we got? We got Mikhail Granlund. What's Mikhail Granlund like? Top six? What about, like, uh, a prospect or something? Like, what about this Yandel cat, man? Toby Yandel, playmaking right winger. We have enough playmakers, man, I tell you. Um, Dragochinsev, another one, playmaking center. Oh, excuse me. Dragochinsev, playmaking center. Hmm, I don't know, man. I like that guy, though, that freaking... You know what I think I would go for, though? We'll go for a draft pick. Uh, I'd want, like, a third rounder. Lupel and a third for Dominic Cahoon. I think we could make that work, could we not? No. Uh. <laughs> what about, like, a fourth? We'll go for Colorado's fourth. Would this work? There's no... Re yeah, thank you. It's like, there is no reason why that shouldn't work. So this is the NHL. So we just got ourselves a pretty... Uh, what was his name? Corbin... Corbin what now? Oh, he's actually like in the minors. So I'm going to have to send down probably... Do I have to send anyone down? No, I don't. I don't have to send anyone down. Jerk asses. So we're going to go for Corbin Lupul, man. Corbin freaking Lupul. Let's go. Edit freaking lines, baby. Yeah, this one's starting to run a little longer now. We haven't even touched the freaking... We haven't even freaking like touched the defense or anything yet, man. So, we'll get rid of Austin Wagner. We'll put the beautiful bastard Corbin Lupel plus three, baby! Woo! Oh my goodness, dude. And this is another guy that it's like, man, look at how he fits on that fourth line. Absolutely unbelievable, dude. This guy is the leader of this fourth line. 100% 22-year-old Corbin Lupel, and if we could get him on some special teams, get him like 25, 35 points this year, on even on that fourth line, man, he could be the next goddamn Gautier. Gautier could honestly move down or something. No, see, that doesn't work. Lupel is like a consummate fourth liner. He could work on the third. We'd have to make some changes, though. Oh, baby, I like this team a lot. There we go, Logan Stanley, and there's that Cal Foot fella. Logan Stanley, he fits beautifully. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I could throw Logan Stanley up on the next friggin' pairing, but Ghost and Pesci, Hamilton and Riley is unreal. But uh, Cal Foot fits. What do we have scratched? We got Mikey. So I guess I could send Wagner back down. We'll keep Riley Stotts and Mikey Anderson. So I'm going to send down Austin Wagner. We're going to go to roster moves. I understand this is getting frustrating now. Uh, so what did I say? Austin Wagner is going to get sent down. So Wagner in the system. We've got... Oh, no. Where? Galiev didn't even grow. Are you joking? Oh, man. You know, the funny thing is, I don't even care. I do want to see how he fits. Because <laughs> if I could get like a plus five out of him, could you imagine? Uh, okay, we're going to say best lines. <laughs> Could you imagine if we got like a plus five out of them? I'd be like, you know what? That's fine. Oh my goodness. So we're kind of like downgrading our defense to like upgrade our defense. What does he look like? Oh, he doesn't really fit, man. Plus one, that's no good. He fits officially like nowhere on this team. Never mind, Galiev. I'm sorry. I still think you're a damn beauty, though. But I think, you know what? Calfoot is fine. Um, Logan Stanley and Calfoot. What about Mikey Anderson? I mean, we do have different coaching now, so we could always try Mikey Anderson. 
Nah, it doesn't work, eh? No, nah, it's going to have to be Cal Foot, man. Unless we did like Cal Foot and Mikey Anderson. Would this work? No, eh? Damn. Whatever, Logan Stanley's better defensively anyway. I still think this team is absolutely out of control, right? So there he is, Philly Gustafson. 87 freaking poise, man. Two years left on that contract. But now, the most important thing to me right now is the fact that we have a backup goaltender that I actually have faith in. I have so much faith because of the poise. Look at the speed, the vision, you know, he the recover, you know. He's a he's a good he's a good goalie. He's just a solid backup. And I honestly think this is going to be a huge factor in how successful we are. If Subban goes down with an injury, our defense is good enough, our goaltending's good enough, and our offense is certainly good enough now that I honestly freaking think even if Gus was to go down with an injury, we're going to be fine, you know? If, say, uh, let's go back to the top line, say Lucas Raymond. Boom, Lucas Raymond goes down with a freaking injury. We could bring up Kirill Maximov to fill that void. We'd get a plus five for it. And it's like, you know, I think we would we would weather the storm and we'd be fine. Our second line is absolutely out of control. It's so good. You know? It's it's absolutely out of wow. Is he even a center? No. <laughs> What about Riley? Oh! <laughs> Riley Kidney gets a plus five on the second line. <laughs> oh, man. But I need him. I need him down on that fourth, man. Son of a... Damn it. All right. What about, like, go... No. I'm, I'm trying to find a way that I could, like, make it work. You know? I could always, like, send freaking Kunakal up there. No, I don't want to do that either. Uh, what about like this? No, that doesn't work. What about if I was to send... Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> 65. 65. Look at this. Corbin Lupel, baby. Corbin Lupel. 70 face-offs. And I'm switching it up with Riley Kidney, who's only got 72 face-offs anyway. Like I said, that Corbin Lupel fella. And then we could like... Oh, it's just... If Heppo just fit here a little better, you know? Damn. If Heppo just... I'm fine with this, though. Our second line is power, and now our third line's good. Riley Kidney up on that third line, I think, is a huge deal. We got Chris Tierney up on that third line. He is going to be really effective. He's going to be a huge help. It's going to be big, man. Plus five, and then plus threes all the way down. On defense, plus three, plus five, plus one. I don't really care for the plus one, but you do what you got to do, right? So on the power play, we are going to have Ryan McFarlane leading the parade with Dylan Larkin. Um, and we are going to throw, would it be Heppo? Maybe Heppo Niemi? So we'd have Larkin. He's a, what, playmaker, right? Uh, left shot, so we'll put him on this side. Vertanen is a right shot, so we'd put him here. Um, No, I think instead of Heppo, you have to put... Uh, where the hell are you? You have to put Lucas Raymond. Plus five. There you go. Vertanen, Raymond. We're going to swap them out. We got Doogie up there. Um, afterwards, we are going to take Lupel. Put him here. Uh, not with Morgan Riley or Chris Tierney, but we're going to have Andreas Janssen. And who else? Okay, now we'll do Heponiemi, right? Oh, or should we do... Riley Kidney. Riley Kidney fits very well right there. And then we've got Lupel, Janssen, a playmaker. And we can add pretty much whatever we want, right? And we do have... Yeah, we got Lupel out there. So we could put, like, Gautier out there. Or... I suppose Heppo. Gives us a plus three. I'm pretty happy with that. But I think I'd put Heppo... Yeah, Heppo would be on center. <laughs> So he's left, we'll put him on the right. Yeah, that, I like that, good for one tease. Uh, on this power play, we are, again, we're going to have uh, Ryan McFarlane rocking the center. We're not going to have Riley up here. Maybe we'll throw ooh, McFarlane, Larkin. And this time, 
I think we'll try and see what it's like if we throw Andreas Janssen out here. Down here, we've got Heppo, Vertanen. Oh, Andreas Janssen's already down here. Well, instead, what we're going to do is we are going to throw Lucas Raymond out here. Swap him. Nah, that's fine. Uh, with Ghost. Yeah, that works. All right, so for the penalty kill, we've got Chris Tierney, Riley Kidney. I like that. He's, oh, wow, he is very smart defensively. And uh, we've got Larkin and McFarlane. Oh, man, do they ever, they're going to play crazy minutes, though, dude. Uh, we don't want Doogie. You know, we don't want Doogie. What about Riley? And, oh, yeah, there we go. Logan Stanley and Cal Foot with Tierney and Riley Kidney with that plus three. Then we've got other people, too. So we got Tierney. Uh, who else do we got? I suppose we could leave Larkin out there. I don't know how much I love that. I don't want to overplay McFarland though, you know? What about Gautier? What about Gautier here? We did something with Gautier. But uh, Mo Riles doesn't really work, so what we could do... Um, right defense. Brett Pesci, what the hell are we doing? Bushka la bushka! Hmm... We throw Gautier there. We can throw Kidney down here with Larkin, Pesci, and Riley. Um, it's it's Morgan Riley that like kills everything, you know. Morgan Riley does not fit on the penalty kill at all. We got Tierney, Logan Stanley, and Riley. Not Larkin this time with Hamilton and Foot. It's not going to be Larkin though, man. I think. Uh, what if we threw? Yeah, he's good defensively. Let's throw like Heponiemi out there or something, you know. And, uh, again, I think it's probably Morgan Riley, right? So we'll throw Calfoot up there. And if we just got rid of Morgan Riley and we were to throw, let's say, Ghost out there, he fits a little better. Every, it's all three fit. The scheme fit. Oh, my God, I know why. <laughs> it's because we had two offensive defensemen and a playmaker running the freaking penalty kill here. Yeah, so that works for me. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'll fix up the extras before we get started. But otherwise, this is our team, man. This is our team. Let's take one more quick look at it. And I am extremely happy with this team right now. And I think we're going to do really amazing things. So it is Lucas Raymond, Ryan McFarlane, Dylan Larkin on the second line, Jake Vertanen, Alexi Heponiemi, and Andreas Janssen on the third line, Riley Kidney, the rookie. Chris Tierney and Julian Gauthier. And on the fourth, Sam Militic, Corbin Lupel, and Tom Kunakle, the veteran. Friggin' two-way forward. On defense, we got Morgan Riley and Dougie Hamilton. Two veteran defenders with Brett Pesci and Shane Gostisbehere. Two veteran defensemen with Cal Foote and Logan Stanley. Two veteran defensemen. So I'm going to send down Galiev, and that's about all we got to do is send down Galiev, and then we're good to go. We got Riley Stotts undrafted. He can be one of our little backup fellas. And then, in the meantime, I am also going to edit lines on our AHL-affiliated team. Oh, and that's, that's about it, man. And then in the next episode, which I'm not 100% sure on when it's going to come out yet, but it won't be too, too long. But the next episode, we will do year freaking six, baby. And we are going to see if we can finally break the Hamilton curse and we can win the damn Stanley Cup for the first time in franchise history. At this freaking rate, in real life, Vegas is going to win a cup before we do. <laughs> in real life. Oh my goodness. Anyway, like and subscribe with the bell icon if you haven't already. There's new videos coming all the freaking time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.